Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how you can add a countdown timer to your Squarespace website using an amazing program called ElfSight. They have plugins that integrate with Squarespace. Now a link to this specific countdown timer plugin is listed in the description below. That's my affiliate link, so thank you in advance for your support. Now let's go ahead and take a look at ElfSight. I'll show you how to pull that plugin information and how to install it in Squarespace. You ready? Let's get started. So here at elfsite.com, I've already logged in. I'm going to grab a countdown timer. I will link to this specific widget in the description below. And right away, we're going to be taken to our template preview here. We've got all kinds of templates to start with, but rest assured, just like Squarespace, all of these templates can do the exact same thing. They're just a good starting point. I'm going to go ahead and start with this one, the launching soon countdown timer. I'll click continue with this template and we'll customize it. So our first option here is the type of timer. We have start to finish, which ends on a specific date. Then we have remaining time counter, which will refresh anytime someone visits that page. And then we have start to finish number counter, which starts at one number and finishes once it's done counting. So the start to finish timer is the one I'm going to focus on because that's typically what people think of when they think countdown timer. So you have a start date that you can send right here and then your end date. We've got a date and a time and this part is super important. This countdown timer is going to be based off the time zone that you set. So if you want a specific sale to end on December 1st, 2023 at 12 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, you're going to want to change this to Pacific Standard Time and the countdown timer will reflect that. Now underneath that we have position. I'm going to leave this as install to required position. That means this timer is going to be wherever I put the code block on my site. You can have it set as a top banner, a floating top banner, a floating bottom, but I recommend install to required position, so I'm going to leave that right there. Now this is pretty obvious. It says message before the timer, and that's exactly what it is. We've got the little rocket ship emoji. It says launching soon. And you have a standard text editor down here. Bold, italicized, underlined. You can put an active link, a numbered list, or even bullet points, or add your own HTML code if that's what you want to do instead. I'm just going to leave this as launching soon. Scrolling down here, we have counters and labels, action after timer finishes, and timer align, three more important settings. Inside counter and labels, this is where you choose what displays. You might not want seconds, you can remove that. You can have just hours if that's what you want to go for, or just days. I like to show you really quickly, hours will automatically calculate if that's all you're showing, so will minutes. Let's say you don't have hours or days on there, it'll tell you how many minutes, even if we're talking about something that's over 400 days. So I think that's pretty cool. Now for the labels, you can label it anything you want. Maybe you actually want to spell out seconds. I'll just type the text in there, and there we go. And let's go back here. Our next option was after action after timer finishes. This is also important. You can either hide the timer, show a message, or redirect to a URL. This is one of my favorites. Let's say you have a limited time release for your online store or maybe a course that you're offering and you want to direct people to a landing page once the timer is up. Select redirect to URL and it'll direct people to that URL once this timer finishes. As soon as that code block loads, it'll say, wait a second, take that person to this page instead. So awesome feature right there in our main timer menu. What you need to select is action after timer finishes. Now we've got two other menus here. We have our button menu. You can toggle that off if you don't want a button or toggle it on. Give it a specific link to anything on your site. Change the text. And then for these two options, when you click on that button, it can open in a new tab. And this last one is pretty interesting. Make the whole timer clickable. If I toggle that off, I can only click on this button to go to the link that I've added right here. However, if I toggle that on, if I click anywhere on this countdown timer, even the rocket ship, that's going to take me to this link. So that's what it means by make the whole timer clickable. It makes the whole timer clickable. Under the appearance tab, you can change the style or pick a pre-made holiday theme. Now for style, I've selected this one that has like the rounded border to it, but you got a lot of options here. You can have no border whatsoever. You can have a specific color block behind each individual number, color blocks behind each section or type of number we could say, like behind hours, behind days, you get the idea. This one's kind of cool. It gives it that little half shadow effect. So it kind of looks like it's flipping through those numbers or again, where we started with the border there. 
Now underneath that, you've got holiday theme. I have it set to no theme, but if you like some of these pre-made designs, go for it. You've got like a Halloween option in here. You've got all kinds of fun options. I'm gonna go ahead and stick with no theme. Now scrolling down here, we've got a lot more flexibility for the design. So let's keep exploring this. If we click into colors, we can change the color of the timer, the labels, the message, which is the launching soon text, the button, and the background for the whole timer. If I click on this and select like a light gray, for example, it's gonna give everything a background. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this at a slightly opaque gray and we'll select done. Now a cool thing about these colors, I should mention this one, uh, let's do this for the button color. If I click on this, you'll notice I have a little eyedropper here. I can select one of these pre-made colors or click that eyedropper and here, I can enter in the hex color code for a color I wanna see or slide this around and pick a color using the color picker. So that option is available right there. That's the little eyedropper. Pick any color you want, again, including a hex color code, which makes it super customizable. Now heading back out of here, we've got sizes and fonts. This adjusts the size of the timer. It's just a slider going from small to large. Same for the button, small to large. And then message font size. Again, the message is this launching soon text at the very top. So I can make that gigantic if I want to, or I can make it a little bit smaller than the timer. I've got some options there. Let's just leave it at 50. Scrolling down a little bit further, we also have animation. This is your last option here we're gonna cover. For animation, it's set to slide. You'll see the new number slide in, really visible on seconds there. We can select flip, where it'll flip down and show a new number. And we can also select fade, where a new number is going to fade to replace the old one. You can also pick none if you don't want it to be animated. Then the individual number is going to change. That's all that none does, but I kind of like flip. We're going to go ahead and leave it there for this particular tutorial. All right, I'll go ahead and head back here, and that pretty much wraps it up for this menu, except for custom CSS. This is a simple installation tutorial, so we're not going to cover that right now. But what we are going to do is add this to our website. I'm going to select Add to Website, and here I can copy the code, and we're going to hop on into Squarespace. Now I am using version 7.1, but this will work in any version of Squarespace because we're using a code block. These are the steps we followed so far. We created the widget, we customized the content, we copied the code, now we need to add the code block, paste the code, and save our work. So I'm going to hop into edit mode, and I'll scroll down here a little bit. I've got a blank section here. I'm going to select add block. I'll select code, and I'm gonna go ahead and stretch this to be the full width of the page. And if I double click on this code block, I'm going to paste my code right here. And we'll go ahead and select save. And now let's take a look at the website preview. And if we scroll down, we can see our launching soon timer. Now I do wanna mention, it does have the Elf site logo. It says free countdown timer widget. If you want to remove that, Head back on over to ElfSite, select View Plans, and here you can upgrade to have the ElfSite logo removed. If you use the code inside the square, you'll save 25%. That's right, they set up a discount code for us. Inside the square will save you 25% on either the single app or the 64 apps pack, whatever you decide to do. I do wanna mention, if you pick the 64 apps pack, they have a bunch of apps, plugins, widgets, whatever you want to call it. There are a ton of them on here, as you can see in this list on elfsite.com. So again, that's inside the square. Use that to get 25% off. So there you have it, step by super simple step, how to install an amazing looking countdown timer on your Squarespace website using ElfSite. Again, my affiliate link is listed below. Thank you in advance for support of my channel here. I receive a small commission if you purchase that plugin through that link, so I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I have a few more ElfSite related ones right here on my channel, and I'll list those links in the description. And I also have a bunch of other Squarespace tutorials because I post a brand new one every single week. So be sure to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest. Thanks again for watching. And most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. To learn more about all the cool things you can do with Squarespace, head on over to insidethesquare.co. There you'll find hundreds of free tutorials just like this one. That's insidethesquare.co.